Welcome to another edition of Drinks Coach at Drinks Coach UK, Insta and Twitter. My personal feed at Vinesack. But you're watching the Drinks Coach UK on YouTube. All information about these wines will be in the pull down menu underneath. If you're looking at it on a computer or a phone, if you're on a telly, go and get a computer or a phone. But all the information will be there. Um, again, freewheeling it in these tough times. Uh, I had three Malbecs. So I decided to do bah, 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 Malbec. Yes, Malbec. Drinks coach. Um, so uh, what have we got here? Well, there's no point doing Malbec unless you show both ends of the scale. Um, so I found an extra one to throw in, which is a bit of fun. Uh, we'll start off with this, which is a, a very good varietal wine um, made in California. A lady who makes a lot of wine, by the way. Very cool chick, very 50s rock chick, come from head to toe in tats. Beth Liston at Dark Horse. Um, let's see what you think of this. This is about £8.50, very widely available. There we go. So Malbec, well, where is Malbec from? What is it? Well, the point is that most people think of Malbec as an Argentinian variety. Argentina makes a shed load of wine and has been for many, many years, most of which was consumed locally. Um, but compared to Chile, which is probably, I don't know, 10th or 11th on the list of producers of wine, Maybe even lower down than that. Um, Argentina's like fifth. Okay, um, It's a massive producer of wine worldwide. And the wine that everyone knows is Mendoza Malbec. Um, they go from the good, the bad and the ugly. The great Malbecs are divine. The bad ones are utter shit. And they're really jammy and alcoholic and they're swamped in a greasy vanillary fake oak character and that right well you're not having any of those today this is um from california from the central valley of california dark horse you can see from the color i mean wow i don't know if it's pretty dark stuff it smells just right absolutely as i hoped it would smell uh varietal malbec um malbec comes from a long chain of different grape varieties, which I've mentioned already in the few uh, Drinks Coach uh, videos I've done. And uh, it's a part of the Carmenet family. Uh, once upon a time, there was Cabernet Franc, and then it spawned three children. Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, Carmenet. They then uh, got jiggy with it in the royal household. Uh, I think I described it as the Habsburg Empire of grape varieties. And they all sort of propagated with each other in a very small space in Bordeaux and... Uh, other things got spat out. So Merlot was created, Petit Verdot was created, and Malbec, quite a long way down the line, is an, an, an illegitimate son of the Royal Cabernet Franc bloodline. Um, kind of got cast out east from Bordeaux, although there are um, vineyards growing Malbec in Bordeaux, and actually increasingly so, even people growing vineyards in, in the Medoc, making very fine wine in Crew Class A vineyards. Um, Malbec is very suited to the to the weather down there, especially as the temperatures keep going up because of global warming. So uh, Malbec is maybe becoming more relevant rather than less relevant in the Bordeaux area. But what it's well known for are the wines which are about three to two, two hours immediately east of Bordeaux in the region of Cahors. C-A-H-O-R-S. We're coming on to one in a minute. Uh, but let's just concentrate on the grape variety for now. They're always dark. They've always got a notion of Christmas cake about them. They've got a lovely, spicy, cloviness about them. And they always taste so Christmassy, but also they just seem so utterly perfect with a seared barbecued steak. Just as, just the when, when, when the uh, Maynard reaction happens with meat, which is the reaction that makes it caramelised, there are certain nuances which just, just taste like Malbec. So it's just perfect to go, <clears throat> big bottle of bitchin Malbec, Bisteca a la Fiorentina, away you go. Um, so, uh, Malbec, as a grape variety, has certain physical properties. It's tall, it's long, the bunch is quite long. But the grapes are squished together. It's like a fist. There's no air going between the grapes. If you look at a, 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 a dangling, free, boxer-shorted, waving-in-the-wind uh, bunch of Cabernet Sauvignon, the air goes through the grapes. So at night, when the temperatures cool down, all that heat that builds up in the in the bunch gets blown away. And also, it's less uh, susceptible to rot, in fact. Um, Malbec, which is like that, and there are some varieties that are similar to that, including Zinfandel, a.k.a. Primitivo. Um, 
they are like storage heaters and they build up heat and they get hotter and hotter and hotter. And they're almost so hot that people have to pick them late because they're too hot to touch the pick in the middle of the, the harvest season. I mean, they can get really hot. And the actual outer layer of the, of the grape sort of takes one for the team and cooks a little bit so that the seeds inside are protected. So um, this kind of storage heater type of variety produces really Christmas cakey flavours because it's almost like it's been in the oven. And that's why Malbec tastes the way it does. It doesn't matter where it is in the world. Even in France, you get just subtle hints of that lovely sandalwood and clove spice. So let's have a look. Um, never seen this before. Uh, this is Marks and Spencer's own label Cahors. And they put Malbec on the label, which is something that French wouldn't do. But obviously Marks and Spencer's, the lovely ladies in the wine team, uh, are, are, are much, much cannier than that. This is made by Belinda Kleinig. Shout out to you, Belinda. Um, Australian um, master wine and fantastic winemaker. I think she's MW, but come, come, may be wrong. But but a very, very talented winemaker nonetheless. Um, and this is 14.5% alcohol and it's French. Good work, guys. Right, so this is where it started. The Black Country Wines of France was their name. You used to be able to drink them when they were young. They'd stain your mouth red. You'd be left in a, cat a state of catatonia. would be like, and the tannin would be so fierce that um, only a large slab of foie gras would kind of pull you out of your coma. Um, so now this is a, 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 a variety which, because it's starting to warm up, is having more consistent luck in France. But go to the turn of the last century, the 1900s. Malbec was being drunk, Cahors specifically, sorry Malbec, um, was being drunk alongside Chateau Margaux, Haut Brion. Roman Conti, the great wines of France in royal households, and uh, something went wrong along the route. And uh, there are people out there that, 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 that would love to see it come back into fashion. And I think we're just about to see the renaissance of Cahors, at least I do hope so. Uh, shout out to Hauteserre, um, to Claude Trigadena, um, to Merquez, to um, all those producers out there that are capable of making um, just, just brilliant wine. And uh, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at this wine. It's a little paler in colour, but you're in a slightly less monstrously hot area. Uh, this was 2017, this California one, by the way. Hottest vintage they've had for 40 years. So everything came in sort of like um, like sausages off my barbecue, I think. But they've managed to produce a wine which still is full of freshness. And I think that's the, that's the, the making of Malbec, that it can really take the heat. It can take a tan. It really can. Uh, born to be in places like California. So... Or indeed, 2,000 metres up a hill in Argentina, where it's probably even worse for you. Oh, wow. That's delicious. Okay, I think it's kind of new to the range. I may, may, I was looking up, trying to find information, couldn't find any. It's a tenner-ish. I'm saying that without any real idea. I did go and buy it, but there was a queue of people with masks on, so, okay, I wasn't paying full attention. Um, you see, it still smells of Malbec, but it has this lovely smell of really good southwestern French wines. It has this it's clarity. I mean, it's clarity with a, with bells on. Um, if I was going to pick a region in Europe that tastes quite similar to Cahors when it's flying, it's Reds and the Douro in Portugal. We'll cover that later. Mm. I'm having that tonight. I'm going to make a chicken curry or something. Okay, right. So we're left here with this. This is a Tesco's finest wine. We're not screwing around. This is called Angelica Sur Malbec. It's from the Uco Valley, which by Argentinian standards, Argentine standards, I'm not sure quite how to say it, um, is actually quite cool. Uh, it's not as hot as other areas. It's not quite as exposed to the UVB radiation as others. But it's perfectly suited to this variety. It has a little more of the kiss of Europe about it, which gives it more finesse. It's not such a big bruiser. It's not gobs of horribly heavy jam. It's got a lovely poise to it. And this is serious kit. It's made by Bodegas y Vinedos Catena. Nicolas Catena created the reputation for Malbec in Argentina globally. And uh, this wine's from uh, yeah, Bodegas um, uh, Esmeralda, I think. And uh, even as a Tesco's finest wine, 18 quid. Okay. Now, just a little tip here. And it's not just Tesco. Um, it would be the same with Waitrose. It's the same with Taste the Difference at Sainsbury's. If they... If they bring out a wine that cost 18 or 19 pounds. They're making a statement. And uh, they're just standing up to be shot down by journalists. And uh, you'll find that if you go for expensive 
taste the difference or, or finest wines, you will find that you get exceptional wines and wines which largely over deliver on price, even at 18 quid. I've tried this before um, by accident. I remember thinking, oh wow, this is delicious. Oh wow, this tastes like a very expensive wine. Well, it's quite an expensive wine, um, but it's worth the pain, it's worth the money. If you want to buy something special to go with a, a roast sirloin this weekend or something like that, and there happens to be some on the shelf, because it's not going to be the first to be sold, is it, at 18 quid? Have a go at this. Ibagon. Woo! -wah. Oh, mate! Slow-cooked adobe beef. Something like that, I think. Something like that. Oh, I don't make myself so hungry. These wines are rather good. So yeah, it's not surprising that Malbec is basically the darling of the UK industry these days. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.